Good afternoon. Uh, in this video, I want to show more lies from uh, Stephen, a Stephen Anderson, uh, this time against the book of Zechariah, claiming that the, uh, the events in Zechariah are not future, that they've already occurred. Let me see here. Let me see what he says here. Now, here's why this is false for many reasons. Number one, there's no record of that in the book of Revelation at all. He's claiming and Revelation is our prime. He's claiming what's false is that when uh, Jesus Christ returns, uh, one third of the Jews will believe on him, and so he has a uh, a mocking attitude towards that. So I can go back further and get the get the entire thing here. That there will no longer be blindness in part upon Israel. This is when Jesus Christ is setting up his millennial kingdom. If you get the time frame according to prophecy, now go back to Romans eleven and see if that's compatible with Romans eleven. Look what it says in Romans 11. Because there are so many people who try to spin this into something that it's not, okay? This is what the Bible's actually teaching. It says in verse number 26, and so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer. And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So when is it that all Israel is going to be saved? It's when Jesus sets up his millennial kingdom on this earth. That's why it says it's going to be Jesus that comes out of Zion and turns away ungodliness from Jacob. Now, what's the next verse say? It says, for this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. Now, what a lot of people will try to spin this as. Okay, they'll basically say, and if you would flip over to Matthew 19, Matthew chapter 19. A lot of people will try to spin this as, well, when Jesus Christ comes back to set up his millennial kingdom, at that time, all the Israelites are just going to get saved. Like, they're, like, basically, all these unsaved Jews are all, when he comes, they're going to see him coming. And they're all going to be like, why did we reject you all this time? Where have you been all our lives? And then they're going to believe on him. Now, yeah, mocking. See, the mocking attitude to what God says in the book of Zechariah. Now, here's why this is false for many reasons. Number one, there's no record of that in the book of Revelation at all. And Revelation is our primary source for studying Bible prophecy. And when we study the book of Revelation, you don't see anything like that. There's nothing like that. Where is this mass? Book of Revelation complements the other sources of prophecy. It's not the only source of prophecy. Conversion of it. See, they have to go back to some cryptic scripture from the book of Zechariah in the Old Testament and try to take Old Testament prophecies and try to bring them forward and try stuff that was talking about the first coming of Christ. Like when it says they shall look on him whom they pierce their stuff that's all okay he says that's uh been a completed prophecy let's read here uh zechariah 12. he says uh and, and it shall come to pass in that day that i will seek to destroy all the nations that come against jerusalem that didn't happen that hasn't happened yet and i will pour upon the house of david and upon the inhabitants of jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. And in that day there shall be great mourning in Jerusalem, as the mourning of Ahagadimram in the valley of um, uh, Magdinam. Uh, so this is this is prophecy that's uh, 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 future. Hasn't happened yet, because it says, well, he had to destroy the nations that come against uh, Jerusalem. This is a tribulational uh, passage. And then he goes on to a mock about uh, in uh, uh, chapter 13, denying that uh, two thirds of the Jews will be destroyed. Uh, so I go find that 51. Let's see here. 51. The 12 disciples, and they're going to sit on 12 thrones, and they're going to rule over the 12 tribes of Israel. So it's not that all the Polish people in Israel today are all going to get saved. There's so many problems with that theologically. 
Number one, saying, well, they're all going to get saved. That's false because salvation is a personal choice. Oh, God's just going to make them all get saved. No, God doesn't make people get saved. He gives a choice. It's free will. So that's the number one problem. And then other people will say, well, he's going to kill two-thirds of them, and a third of them are going to get saved. What, 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 so what? God just foreordains this exact number that just happens to, by their own free will, want to get saved? Yeah, God ordained the exact number that's, uh, that's going to happen. It's going to happen, too. See, now he's got to deny Scripture, uh, and uh, he rejects what it says in, in Zechariah. In Zechariah 13, uh, he says here, uh, uh, let's see here, 13.8. Um, and it shall come to pass that in all the, all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein, and I will bring, a, bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as fire is refined, silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried, and they shall call my name, and I will hear them, and I will say it is my people, and they shall say the Lord is my, my, uh, my God. So here he goes mocking uh, Zechariah again. Say it's an exact certain number, one third. No, no, wrong, false. Again, that's twisting scripture from Zechariah that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Just to it's exactly what uh, we have to, we're talking about. It's dealing with the future and uh, how many uh, Jews are going to be killed. Two thirds and one third will be will survive. Taking some obscure. You think that God doesn't know the numbers that are going to survive, as if He doesn't know? But He mocks. He is, he is Anderson mocking uh, the book of Zechariah because he can't understand it. Her verse from Zechariah. Taken out of context with it. And we can go through Zechariah and prove that those verses don't apply easily. Yeah, you can go through the book of Zechariah, like the, the book of Romans 11, and twist and, uh, and uh, uh, distort the scriptures again, uh, just like you have, because uh, basically what Anderson does is start with a false premise and has to fit his uh, false scriptures. Uh, the scriptures he has got to twist them to make them fit that, because he has a false view of, uh, of, the, uh, of eschatology, and therefore he's, his whole. His whole uh, Theology is warped. But the thing is, we see here that there's going to be a resurrection. So this is uh, Anderson. Uh, he can't understand uh, the Old Testament. He can't understand prophecy. He can't understand the uh, New Testament. And he distorts uh, Romans uh, 11. Uh, and uh, he totally rejects Zechariah. He can't read the book of Zechariah. Uh, it's, still, it's, uh, uh, it's clearly future. But he wants to he wants you to think that uh, it's been completed already. And then he mocks and he says, oh, God, God knows two thirds uh, who's going to who's going to perish and uh, one third is going to survive. And and uh, he mocks all this because, uh, frankly, he doesn't understand it. He doesn't understand it. But now he has to twist it, uh, just like he had to twist the uh, the idea uh, that regeneration means resurrection. The fact of the matter is, is that unbelievers are resurrected at the end of the millennium uh, and uh, they're certain that regenerated. Uh, so these uh, regeneration has to deal with giving a uh, rebirth, uh, a new life. Uh, so uh, again, the uh, the fact is that uh, uh, Anderson is again uh, a, a Bible rejecter. He rejects what the Bible actually says, and uh, he's no different than any uh, Bible critic. Uh, he just tries to he tries to pretend that he's a King James Bible believer when in fact he doesn't believe what it says. He just wants to uh, use the book. In order to, uh, uh, as a uh, camouflage, in order to uh, hide his own uh, the, the falsehoods uh, that he's preaching. Amen. Thank you.